Welcome to Just Campers and Project 2022. In this video, we're going to be fitting our leisure battery and our 12 volt system. So the first thing we need to do is get inside and I'll show you where we start. So this is the largest leisure battery we can fit underneath our driver's seat. It's a 95 amp hour. Now, the choices are you can fit either your leisure battery system underneath your passenger seat or your driver's seat. The reason we're not doing it under the passenger seat is we fitted a swivel base to our passenger seat, so there's no room to put the battery. So hence why we've removed our, our driver's seat, and this is the area we're fitting our leisure battery and our 12 volt electrical system. So I've got a little wooden plinth here that I've made. It literally just goes across from one part of the seat to the other, because there's a sharp part of the bracket that I don't want the battery sitting on. So that literally just raises the back of the battery up uh, and keeps the, the bottom of the plastic of the battery away from the sharp edges. And then later on we'll strap the battery in. So I'm just gonna pop the battery in place. As you can see, it's quite a heavy one. Let me get him in. Nice and snug. There he goes. So we have measured this and made sure that obviously that the terminals are below the, the, the seat base. So as the seat's moving backwards and forwards, it's not gonna short out on these terminals. We've already done that. So the next thing we need to do is get our wiring feed to that. And that's basically a wire from our fan battery all the way through the bulkhead up towards our leisure battery. So now we have our leisure battery in place underneath the driver's seat. Next thing to do is to get our main feed cable from our van battery down to our leisure battery. So that's our cable. It's long enough to go all the way through the bulkhead, across the floor, and then into our underneath our driver's seat position. First thing I'm going to do is remove this trim. Place that there. What that does is allow me to lift this trim slightly. I want to basically be able to get under here. Don't have to take it right off because you can actually wedge a screwdriver in it if I come around that way, like so. Uh, I just need to undo this 27 Torx screw here and this 27 Torx screw here. Once I've undone those two, this panel will come out and I'll be able to access the wiring at the back of the battery and then that will be able to access our wiring grommet which will take us inside the vehicle. Mm. So we're going to take our 12 volt supply from the positive side of our battery. We're going to run it around the side, run it around inside the battery box. There's an original wiring grommet here. So we're gonna run our wire up through here and then follow off with this wire. And then there's an original grommet at the back. So we're gonna pop him out, we're gonna cut a hole in him and put a wiring grommet in it and take our main feed through there. You want to bolt this to the battery so I can make it nice and neat so I don't have to come back and redo that. So that's why I'm gonna remove the fuse. So we do that first. So, just literally take our fuse out. We'll come back to him later. But that means I can just line up my wiring nice and tidy, knowing that it's not live. So we're gonna remove this nut here to be able to fit our terminal for our wiring. You obviously need to take great care when you're undoing this, because uh, this is obviously live at the moment. We don't wanna strike the bodywork and cause a short circuit. So I've got a nice rubber handled ratchet. And I'm gonna take care not to strike it against the body because the power is still on. If you're not confident with working on the battery with it live, you can disconnect the negative side first, which would be this side. Same with a 10 mil spanner or a 10 mil socket, disconnect that, and then you haven't got any problems with arcing out across the bodywork with your tool that you're using on the positive side of the battery. We'll just nip that up nicely. Lovely. Then the idea is we're gonna run our fuse and our main feed with the original wiring to keep it nice and neat but then we've got a really easy access fuse if we need to. The other alternative is having it very close to the battery is that you need this fuse as close to the power supply as possible. So if we have a short in this wire anywhere between here and the cab, it's gonna blow this fuse. This is our original grommet that we've taken out of the bulkhead. So our cable is going to go through this. Um, I'm going to use another wiring grommet as well, which will actually fit inside that to be a lovely snug watertight fit. 
So first thing I'm going to do is cut a hole to allow this to sit in. So with a sharp knife, take great care and cut in our hole. This is our modified grommet that we've just done. We need to place it over our wire so we make sure it goes around the right way. So that's going to fit in the bulkhead that way and our wire is going to go through it that way. So then we just push our wire through, might be a bit tight, like so. That's it. And then once the wiring has gone through into the cab, I can put the bulkhead uh, blanking plug back in. So we've got the feed run in. As you can see, I've still got my fuse out, so it's not live. So we've followed our original wiring round, round the back of the battery. We've gone through our original cable grommet here, and then I've followed the loom along with a little bit of cloth tape, and then through our wiring grommet stroke blank at the back. That's the one we cut and put a wiring grommet in. That takes us into the cab. Now that's nice and waterproof and a good route from our battery to inside the vehicle. Next thing I can do is put our tray back and that's under the bonnet finished, apart from putting our fuse in when we're ready to roll. So we've run our cable through our bulkhead and I've pulled our carpet back. We're gonna run the cable in behind the carpet in a nice natural, natural way so it's not on anything sharp or anything nasty. Um, we're going to secure it down with a bit of cloth reinforced tape, That'll just stop it moving about, uh, and then get it over to our battery enclosure. So we're going to try and run our cable in along with the original cable in here, which will take us under into our driver's seat. So the first thing I need to do is remove our handbrake cover. That gives us a little bit more play room to be able to get our cable up underneath that. So what we do is a little magic tab that we pull forward and then that just slides off. So again, there's a little tab. You can just put a screwdriver in, just lever it open and then the whole thing slides off. This should just gently lift up as it does, look, and clips, lovely. Okay, now that's given us room underneath our handbrake. So we're gonna take our wiring route underneath here and directly underneath the driver's seat pad and then come up through where the rest of the original wiring does. So we're trying to run everything along with the original wiring just to keep it neat and tidy. As you can see, we've got our 12 volt feed underneath the seat. So what we're gonna do with this, we're gonna connect this up to our split charge relay and our box that's gonna go under here, which houses our split charge relay and our fuse box for the rest of our parts that we're gonna run 12 volt from. So that's that. That's from the battery to the leisure battery. This is our 12 volt board. It's got a split charge relay on it. It's got a fuse from the split charge relay, which actually then runs through to our fuse board. So this is our fuse board for our positive takeoff. So from here we can have our lights, our fridge, anything we want, a USB on 12 volt, and that's the earth. So it's quite simple now. We've got our feed from our leisure battery, and we've got our negative from our leisure battery. We've also got our feed in from our original battery to our leisure battery, and then we've just got an earth to take to chassis, and that's it. First thing we're gonna do is hook up our powers and our earth. So this is our feed from our battery. Now that's gonna go underneath to our split charge relay. So I'll have to undo that from the board and bolt that on. Uh, but firstly, I'm gonna bolt our chassis earth in. So there's a handy little earth underneath the carpet here. As you can see, I've already undone it, loosened it off. So we can earth straight to that. Good, so we've got a good earth there. Next thing for us to do is hook up our feed. We're gonna run our feed from our vehicle battery Here, which is our input to our split charge relay. So for our split charge relay, it's really easy. We've got our input from our battery. So that's our in, the one with the red mark on it. And this is our one out. So this out goes to our leisure battery and it also goes to our 12 volt supply fuse board that we're gonna run our lights off or anything we're gonna run 12 volt within our camper van in the back. So the reason we have this so-called split charge relay, what this does, this allows the 
leisure battery under the seat to be charged only when the engine is running. So we're not taking any, ba any power out of the vehicle's battery when the car's not running. So as soon as this sees a input of uh, voltage from the alternator, it then switches on and allows our leisure battery to be charged. So that's our leisure battery installed, along with a split charge relay and our 12 volt fuse box. So there we go, we're all connected up to our leisure battery. As you can see, we've got a positive or negative, runs to our split charge relay. We've got fusing here, which then goes to our fuse box the other side, see here? And we've got an, an earth rail there. So just for test purposes, what we have here is a positive and negative for our reading lamp in the rear. So I've plugged it onto our fuse board here and placed a seven and a half amp fuse in it. The only thing we have left to do is obviously strap the battery down and I'm gonna make a nice little clamp to hold our electrical board in place as well. Then the seat can go back on. Just check our supply. I'm gonna turn our reading lamp on. Look at that, lovely. And we have a USB connection there as well, which is 12 volt. So you can now lay in bed and read your favorite book. For more information and to follow the progress of this van, visit justcampers.com or follow us on Facebook.